after this. We'll never find out now. The shadows haven't consumed you. Good. Gruesome, isn't it? I'm glad you survived the encounter, at least. Did you learn anything more? Chosen? Oh, that's three masters Kedrick has served. Our paladin isn't very picky. He's aligned himself with mind flayers. But I cannot see what he gains. Perhaps we can force it out of him once we have him up against a wall. Was there anything else? The great general is paranoid. Good. That means he's protecting something. I'll wager it's the source of his invulnerability. He'd protect that at any cost. Was there anything else? Then speak. Ugh. Some crusty ballad monger, I expect. They have me slaying gods, or laying with them, depending on the bard. You'll have to sing that one for me when all of this is done. In any case, it was a lifetime ago by now. And for all our victories, we remain on the back foot. We fight, we die, and we just hope that when our time comes, there is someone else to take our place. That remains to be seen. Criterion number one, make Catholic bleed. Criterion 2, survive that thing in your skull. Do you? Well, let us not leave you in suspense, then. You are right. She is. Something malign? Huh. Or some blessing of Seluna, perhaps. I do not know what restored Isabel's life to her, but I can see what she is doing with it. <laughs> if she wished to see us drowned in darkness, Isabel needn't have lifted a finger. Instead, she holds out her hand. I choose to take it. I choose to trust. And not just because I have no other choice. If it will help, only remember. I bear more blame for the Shadow Curse than Isabel does. And she can no more control her parentage than you can that thing in your head. She'll extend that protection to you too if you see her. Mm, you've shown me how well you can sniff out secrets. I'd like to see you turn that nose upon Ketherick Thorn. The Gauntlet of Shah. I can't believe it. I can't believe we found the Dark Lady's sacred crucible. He's a pompous sack of spare parts. He and his undead lackeys should never have come here. Perhaps I can rid Lady Shah's gauntlet of them yet. I know. I can scarcely believe it's real. But I saw it with my own eyes. Felt the polished stone walls raised in Lady Shah's honor. Normally, it would not be for me to pursue becoming a Dark Justicia without a superior's command. But this is different. My lady wanted me to find this place. I know it. Overwhelming. Worship of Lady Shah is usually discreet by nature. Her holy sites have to be modest, well hidden. But that place... I never knew such grandeur had been built in her honor. Don't let Jahira catch you, dawdling. There is something about her. It would be wonderful to kill her. A perfect tragedy. Almost laughable. But he sees himself fit to judge anyone. Did you learn anything about how we might defeat him? That's incredible news. 
I won't ask for the specifics as to how you uncovered that. But I'm grateful you've done whatever it takes. I can't believe... I, w I can't believe there's an end in sight. Thank you. Her breath catches. You notice a barely perceptible shudder run through her body. An unfortunate coincidence. I hope never to meet the wicked man who hemorrhaged shadows over this peaceful village. And yet, you hesitate. She doesn't believe you will do it. You can see she wants to believe there is mercy in all, even in the worst. You aren't the first to threaten me. But I know the eyes of a killer when I see them. You mean me no harm, do you? An experienced cleric can tell such things. The urge within does not want to talk. The restless urge starts to scream. Moon Maiden, have mercy on this poor soul. See how she. Unless some cultists sneaked in, the gods will be overrun. Isabel is gone. Soon the shadows will wash us all away. Listen closely, for there's very little time. Even if last light falls, your mission does not change. You must find Catherick Thorm, and you must kill him. As impossible as that task sounds, there must be a way to break the spell that makes him invincible. There are secrets in this ancient waste hidden from... But hark, something stirs. Happening. They'll all be taken by the shadows. Only by the grace of Isabel's spell will we be spared the same fate. We cannot hesitate. Not even for those we knew, those we cared for. They're no longer who they were. Still your hearts and steady your hands. To battle! ones, my friends, my harpers. I led them here. To this.
but you live. A single green leaf holding fast on a tree ravaged by winter. Yes. I adorn the crown of the Oak Father still. And as long as I do, there's an ever so slim chance I could make it back to Baldur's Gate. If I can warn the Dukes, an army of absolutists is on the march. Perhaps the city still stands a fighting chance. That proud determination of yours should shame me. But it heartens me instead. Pull aside the curtain of years and I can see myself echoing your resolve. Very well. I'll join you. And when Ketherick falls, I'll be there. For us, for them, and for the ones we love back home. I suppose this place is no worse for wear than my last lodgings. Though I cannot say the same for myself, I fear. The battle, the escape after. I might need to lick my wounds a while before I can be of use to you. The time for words will come when we lay my harpers to their final rest. I owe them that. But first, I owe them justice. Moonrise must fall. You know your task. Ketherick Thorm clawed his way free of death. Find out how, so we can send him back. Hello, my dear. <laughs> the Orthon is nothing. I'll have my satisfaction when Raphael makes good on his word. <laughs> in an old pair of boots, in an abandoned outhouse, in my own bedroll. The devil turns up where it pleases him, but we're bound to run into him soon. Owing to your dubious compulsions, we've lost crucial allies. You may be powerful, but you are not insightful. May the darkness protect you. When we make it to Baldur's Gate, you'll be at home in the slaughterhouses. A lot of people died because you lost the run of yourself. Isabel shielded them from the shadows, and you left them vulnerable. If you can't control yourself, you're nothing but a liability. How can I help? Can't say that it did. I'm not entirely sure we made the right decision there, if I'm being honest with you. What's done is done, I suppose. And I'll be loath to cause such destruction again. Not unless the alternative is far, far worse. Whatever these dark powers of yours may be, they serve no purpose if you cannot control them. Or yourself. What a terrible waste. In my years as the Blade, I've witnessed countless cruelties, faced unimaginable evil. But Thorn, he is made of pure hate. The Sword Coast will rejoice when the bastard's fallen. My father is somewhere in this tower. I won't leave him in Thorn's hands. And lest we forget, we've a devil to rescue. Two missions, one destination. Gods. You left last light for the shadows to feed on. You should be shamed for your villainy, not extolled for it. <laughs> not in a mere prison cell, certainly. My guess, Thorn will have confined him in the bowels of the tower. The deeper we dig, the closer we get. You killed Isabel. And all those people besides. What's wrong with you? I want to, but I don't know how. I'm starting to wonder if there's anything I can do. Or anything you can do. You have to stay strong. You have to resist. If you don't, we're all doomed. 
Do you know what happens when a devil is struck down on this charming plane of existence? It returns to the hells, to the very point where it last stood before venturing to whichever devil-forsaken plane it died on. In the case of our friend Yergir, the Orthon you so handily dispatched in the Temple of Shah, he manifested in my House of Hope. He returned to me chastened but intact. His wounds healed, his body restored. He thought I would dismember him. But he has his uses, so instead I am re-educating him. We delivered the devil. Now I want what I'm owed. We had a deal. Indeed we did. I discovered all there is to know about those scars of yours. It's a rather grim tale. <laughs> Even for my tastes. Even if I wanted to walk away from all of this, I can't. Cazador won't let me. And why would he want to walk away? This is his destiny. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master. Kazador Zar. In full, the contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony, very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the Vampire Ascendant. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified, and alongside them he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him, and unlike Astarian, he will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. But the ritual has its price. As all worthwhile things do, Lord Cazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Imagine how he felt then, when one of those precious spawns simply disappeared into thin air. The only missing ingredient is Astarian. You are the final piece he requires to complete the ritual. Your scars bind you to it. Your soul will set off a very wave of death, bringing Cazador his twisted life. And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. So simple. Uh, the end of my life amongst them, just when I was starting to enjoy it. He'll never leave me alone. I didn't think he would when I was just one more wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, he'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. I need to take the fight to him, and I need you to help me. Thank you. The way she leered at me, the blood merchant. I can't get it out of my head. 
I did what I always did. I let her use me. Why does it feel different to all the other times, then? Yes. I think something is wrong. There's nothing more desirable in the world than a vampire, is there? <laughs> How many you been through all I have? You damn well are going to fight with what few assets the gods give you. But a part of me feels sick when I think about getting on my back for breadcrumbs again. I could have lived eternally in Cazador's pleasure chambers. <laughs> I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid I'll never have a new life after that. <laughs> Wish I could say I was surprised about Cazador's pact. Where blood, death and betrayal parade, you can bet your ass a devil is riding Grand Marshal. We're going to keep Astarian safe. On my life, Cazador won't touch him. Full-fledged vampires are not so easily slain. Astarian's master will be no exception. Fortunate for him, slaying monstrous fanatics is a pastime of ours. Seems like Cazador used Astarian's flesh not as a canvas, but as a contract. We haven't heard the last of this, I'll wager. I can't imagine how Astarian must be feeling. The terms of your own condemnation carved into your skin. Monsters' actions. And monsters do not deserve such power as that ritual promised. When the time comes, Astarian will have his revenge, I'm sure. And it will be richly deserved. But not yet. So, what can I do for you? Our very own vampire is the missing pawn in his master's deadly game. Now, how about we go and reverse Cazador's fortunes? Your kill of that poor cleric can mean only one thing. The vile Scaleritas will be here soon enough. No! Don't be sad, Master. I am here to give you a happy present. <laughs> a part of your past is here for you. I come with your disgusting prize. This prize is no payment, but a sign of reverence towards you. Come closer, my depraved prodigy. Ah, try on your new gin jams. They're a present from father. It would be rude not to. Such a strapping young behemoth. <laughs> you cannot speak, but you have command over your own cruelty. So handsome, so brazen. <laughs> this form is the Slayer. <gasps> you will do many naughty feats with it. Oh, I wish I had time to wax your hide and brush your spines. But your adoring butler must away. But you should be hopeful for your bright future. You are going to kill again soon. 
you will keep chopping down the Moon Maiden's family tree. I shall return when you next have need of me. I have your estate to attend to. We will meet again there. Good night, sweet master.